session based. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's RDF and I'm back with FM Scout for another video. I'd like to give a special shout out to my patron Declan Haywood. This is a tactic that he sent to me for me to tweak for him as part of my services on Patreon. So he sent me this tactic for me to tweak, for me to look at. What he wanted is a possession based tactic. His request was also to get the inside forward to score a little more alongside the advanced forward. The tactic you're seeing now is the original. This is what he sent me. And as you can see, it's a nice, it's a nice little setup. I can see what he's aiming for. One slight issue that jumps out at me is having two playmakers. I like to just have one playmaker. So a playmaker instructs your team to pass the ball to them a little bit more. Of course, if you want possession, I can see the idea of having two playmakers. Sometimes it's also about the personnel and not just about the roles. So for example, if I have Allen as the deep playmaker here, Zielinski doesn't have to be a playmaker, but if he does have dictate tempo and play killer balls and stuff like that as his player traits, then he will still act almost as a playmaker. Another thing was the fullbacks and their movement. And of course, as some of you know, if you do an overlap, that then decreases the mentality for your wingers. As you can see here, the winger is on support, but his mentality is cautious. He wanted his right winger to create more, but if his mentality is uncautious, he's not really going to create much. He's going to take less risks on the ball. He's going to play more safe. And if I take the overlap off now and I check his mentality, it's gone up to balanced but still I think that is not enough I think balance is still not a high enough mentality for the right winger so if I just change the mentality to positive and I check voila positive and that's good enough for me so that was one of the changes I made another change I made as well is play through the middle he's got a central midfielder with a defense duty but his mentality is uncautious I want that to be at least balanced I don't really want anybody on my team's mentality to be cautious I want to control the game I want percent Session. so for me the best mentalities are balanced for a defense maybe positive for players on support and attacking for players on attack that is what I'm aiming for so if I play through the middle now and I check Allen again you would notice that his mentality has gone up to balanced so you get a better picture of the tweak this is the original from Declan Haywood it's called FCSM 433 and then this is the RDF tweak as you can see some of the players duties have changed what I didn't want to do because this is Declan Haywood's tactic what I didn't want to do is change it completely I still want it to be his tactic as it is his tactic he just wants my output my take and just a little tweak I'm guessing it didn't give him bad results but he wanted a little better results that's exactly what I wanted for him too so what I have here is my tweak as you can see if we go back I've changed the wing backs he has one wing back on complete wing back attack and the other one on inverted wing back on attack. Well, what I've done is changed both of them on automatic duties. I want them to follow the team's mentality. One ball playing and one central defender. The ball playing has dribble less and stay wider. The centre back just has stay wider as dribble less is automatically there. The reason why I added dribble less on the ball playing defender, again, I want possession. So I want him to pass first dribble later the inverted wing back i've got him on get forward so he can impact the game in the more advanced areas and as i said because he had two playmakers and that's something that i don't really agree with or something that i necessarily use i wanted to change one of the playmakers to a different role and what i've done i've actually changed the dm to an anchor man the reason why i changed it to the anchor man i just want him to hold his position in this area here while the team is on a flexible fluidity they will be moving around possibly changing positions and i just needed one center midfielder to stay in the position between the defense and the midfield cutting out any counter attacks as you can see he holds position and he takes fewer risks he dribble less i can use him as a possession based player we have the box to box midfielder he also 
Newcastle dribbled less, he shoots less, he tackles harder and marks tighter. So basically what I'm trying to do is set a little trap. I've got my advanced players tackling harder, marking tighter, getting in, but if they beat that trap, if they beat that engagement, then they're going to meet this defence wall with players that don't mark tighter, they're going to stay in a position making it hard for the opposition to break down. A lot of times, a lot of times during the season, I had games where the opposition only had two shots with none on target. I've even had a few games where the team didn't have a single shot. And when watching it, it was partly because they couldn't break down my defence. I have the advanced playmaker on attack. I've just left it. With the right winger, I have him crossing from the byline, shoot less, mark tighter, going down the byline to send dangerous crosses for Lorenzo Insignia, who is the inside forward. He shoots less often, mainly because he's very attacking, so I want him to shoot less often often sit narrow again we've got the tackle harder and the mark tighter for the striker i've gone with the full snan who moves into channels but i've also got another version where he's the advanced forward either it's this tactic it has more possession on the ball which you can easily dominate the weaker teams as you can see i'm napoli and if i go away to nr or ac or juve i want to have a counter option so i switch the false nine to advanced forward to give me the counter option the option to play that long ball the option to play that direct ball into the channel for martins to stretch the opposition's defense so if we compare the team instructions that's the original and that's mine I've gone for extremely wide. The reason why I've gone for extremely wide because I want to focus through the middle. So the idea is to stretch your pitch, make it big as possible for the central players to have space. And apart from that, that's the only changes I've made, extremely wide and focus through the middle. In transition, the transition's the same. I've just changed the distribution as we no longer have the playmaker. So he won't be kicking it to the deep line playmaker because he is now an anchor man. So he will be distributing it to the centre backs. Out of possession, I've changed a few stuff. So for example, I've changed the offside trap. As we do have a higher defence line, I think it's wise to have an offside trap. That's my rule of thumb. If I have a defence line that's on higher or much higher, I usually use the offside trap. The only reasons why I might not use the offside trap is if I'm using a libero or a cover defender. I've also changed the line of engagement to much higher instead of higher. For possession-based teams, I feel you need to have a much higher line of engagement in order to close the team down and win the ball back as soon as possible possible i change the defense width to standard so another rule of thumb that i usually use if i have a flat back four with no holding midfielder i usually go to standard i don't really mind conceding the wide spaces but as we do have a holding midfielder i change the defense width to standard i want to concede less from wide areas as I know now, if I'm defending in the box, the deep midfielder should then drop into central defence, which means we should have enough cover for the crosses and we should be able to deal with the crosses. And for the marking and the tackling, I was happy with the original, so I left it. I didn't feel that I needed to change anything regarding the tackling, the pressing, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I, the reason why I'm not using that, game likes to close down with two players, which is very annoying. For example, if these two players go, it gives a big gap for the opposition to play in and to play out and to build with so i didn't want to use that i have the more counter option which is basically the exact same instruction but we also have a big away tactic which i also like to do and the difference with this is the attacking width gone from extremely wide to fairly wide what you can also do is remove this so for example if i play against juventus i might just remove this the reason being is because i'm napoli but i understand that Juventus central midfielders are just better quality. I feel if I try and focus down through the middle, they would win the midfield battle. For some tough away games, I did remove this. So that's for the tactics. All four tactics, so the original and three of my tweaks will be in a bundle for you guys. And now I'm going to show you the results of this beautiful, beautiful possession-based tactic. Once again, shout out to Declan Haywood for using my Patreon service. And here we are, the results. As you can see, Napoli won the league fairly comfortably. We won the league with 10 points different with the second place team which is Juve that's pretty poor for Juve as we can see Atalanta did well too the top goal scorer was Mertens with 18 goals Insigne with the highest average rated player was 7.26 like I told you guys at the beginning he wanted the main striker to score more goals he was my top goal scorer he also wanted the inside forward to score a few goals as we can see here he also played well most assists was Insigne and Di Lorenzo the right back for those who are looking for averted wing backs Di Lorenzo is a very good one 
Pass completion, Diego Deme with 94%. He was an anchor man at times, rotating with Allen. Most player matchup awards is Signa. As you can see, he was just the most important player. Manolas with 12 yellow cards. Diego Deme with one red card. If we go to the league table, we played 38, we won 29, drawn 5, lost 4. We scored 62, which is not a lot. That could be a lot better. We actually scored the least in the top five, but we only conceded 12. That is a crazy amount of goals to concede, only 12. That's phenomenal. If we check the team DLs, we're joint first with average possession. Average possession with 58, so we pretty much dominated most of the games. I'm not actually sure why I'm second place there. Because as you can see here, we have more passes completed with a higher passing percentage, so it's a bit unfair whatever we scored the fifth most goals in the league goals from corners we only scored six so again we're not relying heavily on goals from corners if we had a routine set up then yeah maybe we'll score more goals from indirect free kicks we only scored four so out of those 62 goals we only scored 10 from a set piece pass completion 89 percent pass completion very impressive very impressive on football manager to have a very high possession based tactic that also can win the league we're second with that an 89 percent pass completion ratio but passes completed we're top 18,536 passes completed throughout the whole season very very impressive chances created we're third with 97 Juve created the most chances with players like Pjanic and Ronaldo, that's not really a surprise. Lazio as well, who've got very decent players. So it's no shame that we're third with 97 chances created. Shots on target ratio, 50%. So we're very good with shooting. We might not have a lot of shots or create chances, but when we do, it's very meaningful. Shots on target overall, we have 334. We're third with that. UV on top of 390. Fouls against Napoli, 577 fouls against. Very impressive. Dribbles per game were equal with Atalanta with 17. Conceded. Look at the difference. We conceded 12 and the next team is 25. That's a 13 goal difference. That is incredible. Goals conceded from corners. We conceded three. We conceded no goals from indirect free kicks. Clean sheets. 28 clean sheets 28 clean sheets in 38 games that means in only 10 games throughout the season we conceded goals 28 games we never conceded a goal that is very very impressive i'm pretty sure that's better than jose Mourinho's time at chelsea i can't remember someone can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's better than jose Mourinho's time at chelsea which was a big deal at that time fouls made i know if you're looking for napoli no we're not there boom we are 19th we don't give away many fouls. Only Palmer have given away less fouls than we did. We gave away 291 fouls. We don't give away fouls. Again, very impressive. We also have the best tackle one ratio in the league. Player stats, as you can see, games one, it's just pretty much Napoli players. Goals, Cristiano Ronaldo, no surprise. 26 goals from Ronaldo, but as you can see here, Mertens and Insignia are both in the top three. Remember, he requested for the striker to score more and for the inside forward to score more. Voila, I have completed both. Minutes per goal, Mertens is fifth, Insignia is sixth. Ronaldo just pretty much dominated everything here. Insignia also with the chances created, he's joint first. With Paolo Dybala, with Zappa Costa and Lazari. Pass completion, oh, the defensive midfielder. Allen with 94%, joint first with Wojciech, Szczesny, Fabian is also 7th with 93% pass completion and my goalkeeper there with 92. Dribbles per 90 minutes, Hervin Lozano, Lorenzo Insignia and Jose Callahan. Interceptions made, Castos Manolas is there with 5th. We don't want our players to get stuck in, we're more aiming to cut passing lanes, make oppositions fall into traps to where we can intercept and we can break, conceded. Alex Merritt, only 10 goals. I must say, I think Alex Merritt also got injured. Yep, he did. And I had to play David Ospina. He ended up getting four clean sheets in five games. I mean, it's 
I don't write this stuff. But Alex Merritt, 24 clean sheets in 30 appearances. Now let's just look at our squad stats overall. Mertens was the top goal scorer with 18. Isignia with 17. Hervin Lozano with 12. Very good right winger at times. Alka Milic with 6 goals and 14 starts. Lobotka, who's a very good box to box midfielder, he scored 5 and 18. If you look at our assist charts, there's not one guy that jumps out and it's like, wow, he assisted a lot. But as you can see here, it's pretty much a team effort. Maybe if I tweaked a few more instructions, we could have got more. I'm not sure. But as I said at the beginning, this, this wasn't my tactic. It's a tactic I'm tweaking and I'm aiming to get what I am instructed to do. So if we go to the schedule, it started off good with a 2-1, with a 2-0 win, then a 1-0, and then a 3-0. So first three games, clean sheets. Well, the first five games in the league was clean sheets. It didn't go very well in the Champions League, but as I always do, I, I like to play a rotated team in the Champions League. And, and of course, you might lose against teams like Bayern Munich and Lyon if you are playing a rotated team. But you can see here, lots of greens. We did manage to get a 2-2 draw away to Bayern Munich, which was good. Juve at home, we drew 1-1. But then we beat in our way. We also beat Roma away. So we are beating the good teams. Then we also did beat Juve away. Thanks to Giovanni Di Lorenzo. We drew 0-0 at home to Inter. But by this time, we was kind of running away with the league. And performances were dropping towards the end. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching and shout out to my patrons for using my service and trusting me. I have created possession based tactics myself, but I must admit on the possession stats, this is the best I've used on Football Manager. I, I absolutely have to admit that. So shout out to Declan Haywood for that. As soon as I used this, as soon as I was getting the results, I had to message him and say, yo, I need this tactic. I need to do a video on this. He gave me permission to. I then put it under the download page for FM Scout. So shout out to FM Scout for that too. If you want a possession-based tactic, I would advise you to use this as a starting point and then you can tweak things as you go along. Like I always advise people, do tweaks. When you download a tactic, you should tweak. That's my advice. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Peace y'all, peace and love.